Morning guys, well it's day three of my amazing Greek adventure with BMW Motorrad. Today we're heading out once more into the countryside, the northern route back through uh, from Nafilo where we are back to Athens. Absolutely incredible. If you've not seen the other two episodes of this, this is what you've missed. Corinthian Canal, where we are now, then down on this coastal piece. Oh wow, there's going to be a lot of wows in this video. Now we're talking. Absolutely fantastic. Who's up for a boat trip? Wow, it's another wow moment. Not as bad, is it? Ah, oh, welcome back guys. Well, once I manoeuvre the motorcycle <laughs> out of the parking bay, we are heading to the ruins at Marcini. Apparently, it's the first stop, which is an ancient uh, BC ruins, like 2,000 years old plus. Let me just get my leg over. <laughs> so we spent two nights at the Amalia Hotel in Nathpilo, which has been a very nice hotel pool, spa, even a pianist who just won't stop playing <laughs> all evening, even if you ask him. It's a, really, it's, quite, it's a nice hotel, it's a nice hotel. There's like a buffet dinner, so meals are included. There's like a buffet meal and breakfast included. It's a half board at the hotels. And now we're going back to the original hotel in Athens that we stayed at, at the first night. So, uh, but we have to, I think we have almost 300 kilometers, well, I can tell you, 257 kilometers today. So that it will be almost, well, we've done about 300 kilometers, almost 900 kilometers covered in the three days of riding. You're not shy on miles on this tour, that is for sure. How is that for a sunrise? It's 8.09 in the morning. The sun has just risen. Bit of mist across the the fields there are oh, absolutely beautiful. What a sight to wake up to that is. I think, according to the sat nav, we could be approaching our first stop of the day already. It's a quick little 20 minute trip here. This is the old ruins, I think, here. This is the first bit of culture of the day. I think that's an old ruined castle from 2,000 years ago. Wow, look at that. How do you build something like that 2,000 years ago? I guess the answer is with a lot of slaves. I'm sure, it's going to be excellent. So I'm going to video your briefing, Why Nigel. Do that? <laughs> Put the pressure on. With the dog, my yeah. wife will be impressed. With the dog. <laughs> Bought your own dog. That's quite impressive. This is the oldest known civilized <clears throat> settlement in Greece, so that really makes it pretty old. Around about 2000 BC, they reckon it was um, initially colonized, mm. and it became known as the Mycenaean civilization and lasted for about 500 years. I got it wrong, 4,000 years old, 2000 BC. Imagine turning up for work in the morning and said, right, I just want you to shift that rock and get it up there by the end of the day. It is a good chap. <laughs> Only weighs 10 tonnes. The Lion Gate. It's times like this, I do regret selling my drone. <laughs> but you probably wouldn't be allowed to use it anyway. But how fantastic would it be? Drone shots from up here. 
absolutely beautiful. What a landscape. There we go, some old rocks. Pretty incredible. Pretty damn incredible that was. I think we are heading now up into the mountains a little bit again as we head to the north part of the peninsula, just, just where the crossing is. And then I guess we'll get coffee just before we cross the canal back onto mainland Greece again. I'm pleased to say, unlike the Romans, the Greeks did love a twisty road. There's not many straight roads in Greece. You wouldn't think these roads would be tarmacked and is in as good condition as they are. You know, in Greece, you, you, I'm really surprised at this, the road surface conditions. You wouldn't think they're tarmacked, these little cut through roads. But they, you know, they're as well maintained. Well, these are almost better maintained than they are in the UK, these roads. It's little cut throughs. Amazing. Morning. I think there was Penfold at a Danger Mouse. Showing your age again, Chopsy. Showing your age. Morning. 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 No, no, come to morning. <laughs> morning. No. Okay. Morning. Blimey, I think we actually have a pet dog here. Morning. A dog which has an owner. Yeah, this is the vineyards. The Greek vineyards. Can I smell it? That's a red. I think that's the white. Morning! Yeah, lots and lots of vineyards. For a bit of Greek plonk. Ooh, like a crush of grape. <laughs> what sort of video is this? Look at it. Absolutely. Oh, we're into olives now. We've done the wine, now it's the olives. There'll be a load of cows next for the cheese. What's he pointing at? What's he seeing? Oh, it's a goat. Oh, yeah. Don't be silly, goat. Don't be silly, goat. Don't run in front of anybody. There's another one over here. They're just wild goats, I think those. And there's probably the bloke with the guns trying to shoot them. Nigel nearly ended up with a little goat mascot attached to the front of his bike then. <laughs> Look at it, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Another wow on the wow counter, please. It's sort of got a bit of Spain, a bit of Portugal, a bit of Italy sort of vibe to the place. There's sort of elements of all those places here. And also it's got its own identity as well. But you can definitely see you know, a mixture of those three countries which is no bad thing, because all of those countries are fantastic. But what an incredible place. I wonder how much this landscape has changed since those ancient times of the Spartans, etc. I wonder how, I guess it must be, nothing's changed, you know. I guess it must be the same, really. Obviously the roads are new and the, I guess a little bit of a, deforestation maybe you know but I wonder how how different it looked back then or if it really did look the same as this I guess it can't have changed that much in 3,000 years or whatever it is two and a half thousand years since the Spartans there's one of the little churches I was telling about little memorials I guess of some if you look inside of them there's photos of people so like, you know, I guess it's I guess it's where someone's died in a in a road accident or something. Someone overcooked it on a corner and uh, ended up down there. Don't know. It's a little reminder though of just how dangerous these sorts of roads are. But all 
also great fun. The last day, I'm a little bit like, oh, no, it's the last day. This has been so good, I don't want it to end. Before I know it, we're going to be back at Athens and that's going to be it at home. Back to the wet, rain, cold, overcrowded UK. Coffee. Coffee, Nigel, coffee. Think of the coffee. Right, ready to roll out. I think we're coming down from the mountains now because it's still actually quite high. And then we're heading up to the northern coast road and it's quite a view coming out of the woods down the mountains with the, with the sea and the beach and the, the ocean in the background. Start the bike, hurry them up. Back over the Corinthian Canal. Look at that. So we're back onto the mainland now, back onto mainland Greece, off the Pel Peloponnesian Peninsula. I think we're on a hunt for some lunch now, so we've come across there, back on the mainland, then it's I think a northern, head north now. Head north up to I think a few more mountains. And then this could be a little bit of a coastal bit actually, I think we do a little bit on the coast now. So a pretty coastal jaunt now and then hopefully some lunch up here because I'm getting rather peckish because I skipped breakfast. What was I thinking? Right, a little bit of lunch there, but overdue. We spent too long in the restaurant waiting for the pizzas to come. So we're now about half hour behind schedule. So we're heading along the coast and then up some mountains and then down some mountains and then to Athens basically and that's the end of the day oh can't believe it's almost over gutted 23 and a half degrees seems hotter oh come on Mike get on your bike so this tour has been incredible I've really enjoyed it I wasn't sure to start with because I thought mm, you know they're not using BMW's own bikes they're using a local tour operator to hire the bikes from you know what was it going to be like but i've been very 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 impressed with how it's been run nigel the tour guide has been fantastic the organization the, the information you know and he's tell, telling you about what routes have been going on what our plans are for the next section making sure the people who have sat navs are, are up to date the cost of this sort of trip well this one depending what bike you want to go for the the, the costs vary so for the 750 800 it's i think 1800 pounds gb pounds for the gs 1200 i believe it's about 1950 something like that if you want to bring a pillion so you want to come with your wife or something to go on the back it's about an extra hundred to add on top for the pillion so it includes meals, so that includes half board at all the hotels as well. Uh, things it doesn't include is fuel, no fuel included, no lunch in included, obviously no beer tokens included either. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it is a little bit on the more pricey side, but if you want to travel with someone who's, no, this is BMW Motorrad, you've got that security that you're with someone who knows exactly what they're doing, and of course the global coverage they've got is, is the big thing. You can go to so many different places with them. But uh, more information in the link to BMW Motorrad's website. But massive thanks for the invitation, BMW, I really appreciate it. <laughs> and look at this. This is your proper grease on the beach. I'm just looking at the sat nav here and it looks like it's very, very twisty around this section. So it should make for some epic footage and some epic riding. Probably the last epic bit of riding of this trip. Oh. I think the report from home was six degrees and rain today. Sorry guys. What's this chat doing? Six degrees and rain. It is not here. <laughs> 
that's what's so good about these trips. Leave that horrible blighty at home at your six degrees in rain. Give me 25 degrees of sunshine and hot tarmac. Oh yes. So we're up in the mountains now, cutting across, looks like Almira. My 360 camera's run out of batteries or storage, I filled the memory card. So you've got no 360 views, but just look at that there. Wow. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the roads are pretty good as well. This been through a smooth section of flowing bends left and right, left and right for about 15 minutes worth of bends, just like this. But the views though. Does Greece have everything? It's certainly looking like it. There's people at different skill levels on this trip. So there's been a lot of advice given from the, the more experienced riders to the you know to the more inexperienced riders of how to take these switch because these switchbacks aren't that easy you know they're you've got to be very careful there's certainly you know, it's a little bit loose it looks like it's a little bit dusty in places they're sort of undulating so you know there's been a lot of advice given from the more experienced guys saying how to take them you know but yeah the, the, the general consensus is be smooth look where you want to go you know don't don't look where you don't want to go look at the apex look beyond the apex and try not to look on the ground too much unless you think there's the surface is a bit bad you know try and be smooth if you look at nigel out in front he's not even braking i, I was sure for a minute his brake light was actually broken or he disconnected it <laughs> but he hadn't he's just, he's just so smooth i tend to go more on the back brake i tend to brake a bit before the corner set the bike up on the back brake i think nigel must be relying a bit more on the engine braking he must be in a lower gear and letting it rev a bit harder and dropping the speed by using the engine but either way you know it's really interesting techniques to take these sort of switchbacks and uh, i think there's a lot of skills been learned by some of the more inexperienced guys on this trip oh we've cut across onto the sea now look at that water oh it's like a mill pond oh i wouldn't mind a dip in that I wouldn't mind dipping my wick in that. Look at it. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. What, what, oh, not quite so wow. Mm, what's all going on here? Cancel those wows. Ah, oh, me arse. Me arse is starting to ache now. Got to stand up for a bit. Also got a bit of gut rot as well. That pizza I've just eaten isn't sitting too nicely. Ooh, I feel sorry for those behind me. That is sky and ocean and it's hard to tell, it's hard to separate them apart. One is just blending into the other. Mapa Mapalamadika. Ah, it's all Greek to me. Just the cake stop. I hope we're stopping by the water for cake. Because I want to dip my GoPro in. Look at it. Oh, can I join you for a swim? Absolutely spectacular. Interesting. So I've had a bit of kind of water there. Do you see how clear that was? So I've had a bit of rock fall here. Yeah, that's where we're heading. I think that town over there, in the distance, may not see on the GoPro. That's where we're having coffee. Look at that water. Look how clear it is. Give us a wave! <laughs> oh, I want to go in. I want to go in. I guess when you say Greece, this is more what people think. Greece. The beach. The bars. The sun. I don't think of how good the roads are. I mean, this is, this is Greece to most people, I suppose. Now you know different. So much beauty inland, away from the beaches. So many good roads. 
there is another aspect of Greece waiting to be discovered by you.